Alright, picture this. Your housemate's been out of the house for a while, and by a while I mean several weeks while her room's had all sorts of problems. So how would you celebrate her moving back in? You treat her to her first viewing of Miracle on 34th Street, an absolute Christmas classic. I'm talking big bowls of popcorn, all kinds of festive music, and just being merry to be honest with you. That's the sort of atmosphere that that classic comedy curates. In this modern age, you can't deny that a big part of the festive season is watching films and TV. And you always get these lists that give you the essential Christmas TV and films, which amount to like 20 odd different films and TV shows. And it's just like, well that's nearly enough for every day of the festive season. And most of us haven't got that much time, to be honest. That doesn't mean that you have to watch them all though. I mean, I mean, first of all, shot Christmas confession, I had never seen Elf. Just let that sink in there. And that really doesn't bother me as much as other people think it should. I don't mind that though, because it means that in future years there will be a moment where I will enjoy Elf for the first time, and it will be something for me to experience along with my core favourites in my Christmas collection. Winter is the perfect time to stay in when the weather outside is frightful. It's horrible outside, You, it's the best excuse you have to stay in and watch films, so embrace it. And I like to think that we all have a core collection of Christmas films and TV that we watch each year. I've already started watching mine, I'll probably have some repeat viewings as well. So I thought I'd use this second vlog of Christmas to explain just what each of my favourite Christmas films mean to me. Number one, The Muppets Christmas Carol. Last year I got this quaint little copy of the original novel by Charles Dickens and for some reason it shocked me just how short it was. I got it in the morning in my stocking and by the time we were heading off to my aunt's for Christmas dinner in the, about mid-afternoon, I'd already finished the novel. I literally, I got the stocking out, there's my presents, I thought, right, Christmas Carol, done, sorted. It was interesting reading it as well, because I had that context of the Muppets adaptation at the back of my mind, you know. I wasn't going into it thinking, oh, Christmas Carol, what's this going to be like? I pretty much knew what was going to happen, but when I pictured all the characters like Bob Cratchit, I pictured Kermit the Frog. When I pictured Ebenezer Scrooge, I pictured Michael Caine. My name is Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> that was terrible. But what really surprised me was just how close the Muppets Christmas Carol is to the original text. I mean, yes, there aren't puppets strolling across Victorian London, but other than that, it's pretty faithful to Charles Dickens' novel. I know not everyone loves the Muppets, but I, I really appreciate their unique, hearty form of comedy. And Michael Caine will always be my definitive Scrooge. He just, he just refuses to let his bitterness of the character be overwhelmed by any of the Muppets around them. And that's the beauty of it. The Muppets' comedy never interferes with the darkness that also pervades the novel. It's one of those festive classics as well that just refuses to let itself be constrained by having the label of a children's film. I mean, it is pretty dark in places. When I first watched it years and years ago, it terrified me a little bit in places, but now I freaking love it. One of my old school friends even managed to devise a drinking game for the Muppet Christmas Carol, and I, I missed it in the end because I saw just how many rules he'd made and I knew my liver would never forgive me. But it just shows you how the, the movie is just suited to every occasion. Number two, Home Alone. Back at my first Christmas at university, many of my hallmates were shocked by the fact that I'd never seen Home Alone. I was 19 and I had not watched it any years previously. They were horrified by that. This resulted in a large group of us watching it on the first instant it came on TV, and now it's a firm favourite of mine. What I love most about the pandemonium Kevin creates is just how creative it is. Yes, Christmas is a time of year for celebrating, but it's also one that encourages your imagination to go wild. You know, it encourages you to believe in optimistic myths and perfect winter scenes. Not only will Home Alone have you in stitches, but it also stimulates your creative side. I instantly I was thinking of traps that I could put around the house trying to catch Santa. So yeah, it stimulates your creative side, albeit the devilish side of it. <laughs> Number three, Miracle on 34th Street. Can't remember how old I was when on one summer evening my parents casually broke the news about Santa. And if you haven't heard the news about it yet, then don't worry, it's just about his, uh delivery schedule. For some reason, I remember being really devastated while my sister just shrugged her shoulders. Okay, I'm gonna have to say spoiler alert here because we are going into some home truth territories. It's not as if I believe that every department store Santa was a big man himself, but I still come on to the belief that Father Christmas was really out there somewhere. I don't know, I just like the idea of someone spreading peace and goodwill and only work... I don't know, I just like the idea of someone spreading peace and goodwill and only working one day a year. That's gotta be the coolest part of a job, surely. Miracle on 34th Street, despite a few flaws, 
can warm the hearts of the biggest Christmas cynics. It just emboldens you to believe in all kinds of possibilities and encourages you to make your own selfless mark on this wonderful time of year. Indulge in spontaneity and forget the stresses that can come with the season. It's the moment you spend spreading goodwill, whether to family, friends or complete strangers, that make Christmas what it is. And finally, the nightmare before Christmas. First time I went to Camden Market, the first time I went to Camden Market in London, I got one of those knockoff hoodies that has Jack Skellington's wicked grimace on the back. The thing is, because of all the Halloween characters, you can sometimes forget that The Nightmare Before Christmas is predominantly focused on the festive season instead. And because it features two holidays, I believe that I can justify watching it any time between those two. You know, so I've got plenty of time to enjoy it. Aside from being an immense technical achievement in stop motion, it really just encourages the idea that you can celebrate Christmas in your own individual way. You shouldn't feel restrained by a tradition or what other people do to celebrate it. There are so many things you can do this time of year. You can sometimes feel a pressure to do them all and fit them all in before the season vanishes. Yes, Jack's plans go a little bit wrong, but the heart is still there. It just encourages you to really believe that you can do what you want. Just don't overestimate your own abilities. Right, I hear a mince pie calling my name, so I shall see you later. On the first day of Christmas, Zeppelin gave to me a video because I subscribed